Hello, my dear friends. My name is Alberto. Welcome to this episode of AMP in WordPress. In our previous episode, we talked about a set of fundamental criteria our sites should meet in order for us to succeed as web content creators. We call them success factors. And we concluded that one of the most critical and most challenging success factors is performance. In this episode, we are going to talk about what performance actually means from both the perspective of our users and from the perspective of the execution of our sites. And how can we reason about performance in practice? Success in the web is all about user experience. We want our users to experience joy and also to not experience frustration when they access and engage the product we make, the content we publish. Now, we learned in the previous episode that building sites that provide all these pillars of great user experience is very difficult, in part because web development is very complex, but also because we are developing for a global audience on a platform like the web, which comes with a set of non-trivial challenges by itself. Now, we can see how challenging it is to build sites that perform well in the web. If we take a look at performance data sets, such as the HTTP archive, the Chrome UX report, and also numerous studies that have shed light on the impact performance has on users and on business metrics. Some examples of these are the following. Pinterest increased search engine traffic and sign-offs by 15% when they reduced the perceived wait times of the user by 40%. There was a double click study by Google where it was found that sites that loaded within five seconds had 70% longer sessions, 35% lower bounce rates, and 25% higher ad viewability than sites that took four times longer to load. And the BBC found that they lost an additional 10% of users for every additional second their site took to load. Now, capturing the importance of good user experience for the success of content creators and of the web as a whole, Google recently launched an initiative that is called WebVite. The goal of WebVite is to provide unified guidance on a set of quality signals that are essential to deliver a great user experience on the web. In a nutshell, when we talk about WebVite, we refer to three main aspects. A set of user-centric metrics that we can track during the execution of our web pages, tools that allow us to measure and report on the performance of our pages in terms of these web vitals, and incentives so that we have clear and compelling reasons to strive for healthy core web vitals for our sites. Let's take a brief look at each of them. In terms of metrics, there are many web vitals and many web performance metrics in general. We are interested in a subset of these metrics that are referred to as core web vitals. These are page level metrics and ideally, all of the pages of our site should do well with respect to them. Each core web vital represents a distinct facet of the performance of our site directly related to the experience of our users. Specifically, load time, how fast our pages are loading into the devices of our users. Interactivity, how long does it take until users can start interacting with the content of our pages. And content stability, how stable or unstable the content of our pages behave when users engage with it. Now, the core web vitals associated with this facet are the following. Largest content foot pain, or LCP, measures low time performance. It seeks to quantify the rendering time of the largest component visible within the viewport of the user. To provide a good experience, LCP should occur within 2.5 seconds from when the page first starts loading. If the LCP is between 2.5 and 4 seconds, so things are not terrible, but we need to improve. And if LCP is larger than 4 seconds, then we know that our users are having a bad time as they try to load our content into their devices. Now, first input delay, or FID, measures our site's responsiveness. It quantifies the experience our users get when trying to interact with the components of our pages. To provide a good user experience, pages should have an FID of less than 100 milliseconds. If the FID is between 100 and 300 milliseconds, then things are not tragic yet, but we need to improve. 
And if FID is longer than 300 milliseconds, again, we know that our users are having a bad time and frustration when they're trying to interact with our content. And then we have cumulative layout shift or CLS with measures the visual stability of our content. The way that it is computed is by detecting when a given element that is visible in the viewport changes the position between two rendering frames. A single shift is bound between zero and one, where one means that all of the visible content shifted and zero means none of the visible content shifted. The overall CLS course is then computed as a cumulative value of all the Yao shift happening on page load. Now, if we want to provide a good user experience, then our pages should have a CLS of less than 0.1. If CLS is between 0.1 and 0.25, things are not tragic, but we need to do better. And if CLS is larger than 0.25, then we know that there is a lot of content system. Our users are, users are probably clicking on places that they did not intend to, and they are super annoyed. Now, the next aspect of Core Web Vital is tools. We know that how our sites perform in terms of Core Web Vitals correlates to the experience that we bring to our users. Therefore, it's very important that we are able to measure them, reason about them, track them. Now, that's why all Core Web Vitals are supported by all the popular Google tools for developers. This includes Page Speech Insights, the Chrome UX Report, Search Console, Chrome Dev Tools, as well Lighthouse, and there is also a Chrome Web extension that we can use. And the final aspect is incentives. We need compelling reasons for us to strive for our goals of great Core Web Vitals in all our pages. The first and foremost incentive is that we don't want our users to be sad. We want to bring to them great experiences. And we know that if we do that, they will reward us with their engagement, with the time, their loyalty to the content that we bring to them. Another incentive has to do with having a greater chance of our content being easily found when users search for it. Core Web Vitals are at the center of how Google measures a new ranking signal called page experience. The rationale behind this signal is that all of other things being equal, great page experiences should stand out when users are looking for content simply because users will enjoy them more, will engage with them more, we will make the publisher more successful and everybody will be happier. The page experience signal is a combination of page level metrics that include the core web vitals and also other aspects that are very important. So mobile friendly, safe browsing, HTTPS security, lack of intrusive interstitials and so on. All of these elements are combined and are used as a ranking factor, one of many. But all things equal, the better the page experience is, the greater the chance of ranking higher on Google search results. And also the greater the chance that your pages will be able to take advantage of all the possibilities where page experience plays a role. So this is great. We call web vitals and page experiences, we know exactly what we want to strive for. We know that if we ensure that our site meet the thresholds defined for Core Web Vitals, then we are on the right track to make our users happy and consequently to be successful as web content creators. The next question is, how in the world do we achieve that? And here is when having the right tools at our disposal is super important. AMP is a powerful and cost-effective tool that has been specifically designed to make it easier to build sites that provide the pillars of great user experience regardless of our technical expertise or the amount of resources we have. In the next episode, we will discuss what AMP is and how the capabilities it brings out of the box make it a great tool to help us reach those essential core web vitals we need in our site. So stay tuned, don't forget to click the subscribe button and enable notifications, and let's make it happen.